and welcome to your tutorial on how to build your Rogue One and forward style Stormtrooper. Hey guys, this is Mike from 850 Armor Works. Uh, thanks for joining us here on this video. Here we are going to be going over a couple of things. So number one, this is a incinerator trooper or Rogue One Stormtrooper um, speed build that we're getting ready for Dragon Con 2023. Uh, I'm going to take y'all over all the basic armor building. A lot of this is the same as some of our other tutorial videos like the biceps, the forearms, uh, the, the shin assemblies for the tank drivers. We're basically doing a lot of the same things. So you'll be able to refer back to those and see where they're going. I also like the abdomen. Um, you'll be able to refer to those. There are only going to be a few tips and tricks, but what I'm really running through here is going on a speed build. Um, I build a lot of armor. Armor is not hard for me to assemble at all, as long as you follow the certain steps and, and whatnot you need to do. I will not be doing every single part. Uh, a lot of these are, hey, it's got its basic assembly. It's getting tossed to the side because it needs other things like cover strips or um, knee details added on, things like that. That'll come later. So this is all just basically, hey, these are gluing the plastic parts together. So that's out of the way. Let me go over the parts we really don't need to worry about. Um, and before we go over uh, the parts we don't need to worry about, trimming your armor. You will not see me trimming armor on this workbench unless it is for snipping something or a size adjustment. So all the parts are going to be pre-trimmed. I do all my trimming on a bandsaw. And that's why we have these little fuzzy things right here on the edge. All I have to do at that point is a little bit of palm sander, a little bit of belt sander, a little bit of palm sander, and it's good to go. So that's how that works. Going over the parts that we really just need to trim, sand, and toss to the side before paint. First one, your shoulder bells. They go right here. Once these are trimmed up, all they're waiting on is paint. All these need right now is a little bit of edge sanding and they're good to go. Not gonna do that right now. Posterior. It's a posterior. This is one of the last things I even assemble after paint. So not worried about it. Cod plate. One of the last things I assemble again, too. I like to keep this removable, so it's not that we really worry about at this stage. Trim it, sand it, you're good to go. Right there. Hand plates. Trim, sand, get them ready to paint. Now, these are the little uh, side wings that go between the chest and the back. They're going to attach to the back. And, um, you know, you can Velcro it or use some nylon or whatever in the front. I made these in black. I only have to worry about painting these. I'm not assembling them on the armor because I'm going to have to mask them off. I'll do that later. They go in the box. Done. All right. Things we have to assemble. So what do we want to assemble first? I usually start with the arms because they're easy. Um, but I haven't done a thigh tutorial yet, so... Let's do the thighs. Now, thighs consist of inside, outside. That's about it. All we got on the thighs here. Other parts we will have on the thighs is going to be the, the knee brick. This is a part that comes a little bit later. So, I'm going to start making sure that everything is edge sanded here. That's where I'm going to bust out my handy dandy palm sander. That's parts, edge sanded, ready to go. Your inside has the big cutout. So what these are gonna do is we are going to butt join these together. Very simple little process. Sanding, sanding, sanding. Sandpaper. Sand the inside.
And then what we're going to bud join them with is some scrap ABS here. They're going to go across the full length on the inside. We will glue one side first and then the other. Uh, I need a little bit more than this. So I'm just going to split this one in half. Actually, I think I'll be okay. I think I can make do with what I got. So this is scoring and snapping. Make a couple scores with a razor blade and then snap it. So just like these, sand it. Yeah, you can just toss them on the bed. It'll be all right. Ooh. Actually, I can use some clamps. And we're going to line it up about halfway. Take a pencil. Mark it. That's where we're going to put a glue line. To make sure your plastic is dust free, take some thick super glue, follow on the inside of that. Line there, then you can follow that pencil mark down. It's not one of these things that has to be absolutely perfect. It's just a good guide point, so you're not absolutely guessing at it. So putting a little pressure on. I'm going to take a little accelerator on the back end, squirt it down in there. See, clamps would be really handy right here. It's just all our clamps are in use somewhere else. In fact, I'm going to have to steal a couple of clamps because doing the other half is just pain in the rear. So there's the first half. Now, make sure you get the right opposing part. You don't want to, you know, do something like this. So we got this one. Make sure they butt up together okay. We're not concerned about how clean these edges are right here. It's going to have a big resin cover strip that goes over it. So we're looking good there. It'll continue on. Some glue. Make sure you're lined up at the bottom. So that is what's important. Get a little squirt to get it going. All right. Now it's joined together. Now, I already know this armor fits me just fine as it is, so I haven't done any sizing or adjustments. If you need to make it more narrow, you can trim off a little bit on the middle and bring it in a little bit more narrow. I generally prefer to have armor a little bit bigger and add padding. So that's the majority of the right thigh. Now we're gonna move on to the left thigh. There is one special thing we do with that. And the right thigh is getting the knee block details, I'm not worried about this gap right here. This gap makes no difference whatsoever. Hidden detail doesn't matter. So we'll go over how to join this a little bit later. I am going to steal this off the top because it is a great tool to have a little bit later. So that can go in my box. Same thing here.
doubt. The left eye, on the other hand, has nothing covering this. So since we have a nice little gap right here, we're going to use that scrap plastic, glue it on the inside, and fill it real quick. And by filling it real quick, I mean really quick. It's not going to take long, and this is exactly what super glue is intended for. So we got that little scrap of plastic. It's already sitting about the perfect size. Just going to make a little bridge right here. That's set really well. Now, I still have another little gap right here. So here's your next magic trick. Plain old masking tape. I'm going to put this masking tape over this hole. Go with the outline and shape it apart. Flip it back over. Get your super glue back out. Drop you some super glue in this hole. Get a little squirt of accelerator. Doesn't hurt to go back behind it again. A little bit of extra. Flip it. Pull your tape off. There's going to be some uncured glue there. Give it a little squirt, and it's cured. So that's going to finish filling that gap. We still have a little bit more of a gap here. You can use body filler, but super glue is faster. It only takes a few seconds. Come behind it with palm sander. <laughs> Still have a couple of small little gaps. Do it again. While well, that's setting, what we'll show you, we use thick, excellent gap filling capacity. That's why we use thick. We also use thick so it doesn't run all over the place. It will run, but not absolutely everywhere, like thin or water thin. So this is cured. Again. <laughs> now we're fully smooth right here and ready for paint. I've got a little bubble left right here, but since we're going to have a cover strip over it, it's budding right next to it. I'm not really concerned about that. That's unseen detail. So we are done with the left eye until it's time for cover strips. Go ahead and move us on to the sins and the calves. As you all can see... I've done this a few times, so I know exactly which parts are which. So with our molds that we have here, we have the outsides are a completely smoothish edge. The insides kind of come down to a little bit of a point. So that's the easy way to identify it. For the most part, when you're done assembling these, unless you have really long legs like me, you're going to end up trimming a lot of this off anyway. It's just a really good identifier. So I'm going to move back on to doing more palm sanding to clean up these edges. Yeah. 
righty. Now let's determine again which one's the right and which one's the left. So this one's the right because we got a little pointy. Let's also determine which way we want the rear to overlap. That's going to determine where you have your positioning here. Because one way is going to be a little easier, one way is going to be a little bit harder. So this is going to be my right leg. I don't want it overlapping outside. Well, I'm sorry. I don't want it overlapping inside over the outside. I don't want to look on the side and see this edge. So we want this outside overlapping there. So that's going to determine which sides I'm going to glue. So I'm gluing this inside edge. This outside edge. So, right along with pencil marking, test fitting. Very important. Before you ever put a drop of glue on something, test fit, test fit, test fit. Can't stress that enough. So just applying a little pressure, I'd really prefer to have a couple of clamps here, clamp at the top, clamp at the bottom, but I'm going to have to make do. Just making sure I get both the inside and outside seam so that we have a very strong and sturdy part. So there is your right leg. Now, looking at your reference, the right thigh has that block detail. So the right calf has nothing on top of it. The left calf gets this. So same as that left thigh, we're going to go ahead and fill this seam in right here. I want this to look like one smooth, consistent seam. So doing the same thing. I'm just going to kind of build it up with a little bit of super glue. Squirt it lightly. Let that cure up really well. Start sanding. Air. It's pretty close to getting in one shot on this. It's for extra reinforcement. I'm going to run a little more on.
That is that. That completes the right thigh. Or right calf. Moving on to the left calf. Repeat the same procedure. Let's verify which side we want to overlap here in the front. Okay. It's easier for this to go over this way. It's on the left. You're not seeing it. You're going to keep the seam on the inside here. So now we know that this is the top, this is the bottom. We're going to sand those sides. Test fit again. Make sure everything looks good. Remember, there's going to be a cover strip that goes over this. That completes the left calf. What well, we will cover in the resin cover strip sections after the resin cover strip goes on, that's when this goes on. So it's going to glue directly down to the cover strip right there, and we will deal with that whenever we get to that section. All right, next part, let's cover the abdomen. So we have the front abdomen. These are the sides. They're going to come to you looking more like this. It just split this straight down the middle. Because these are going to overlap right here. And this is acting as shims and adjustments in case you're girthy like me. And then your cover plate or your trauma plate. And it's going to end up going right here dead center. This is the last thing to go on. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and make sure we are lined up and everything looks good here. Uh, I don't have a completely straight cut right here, so I'm going to take this to the belt sander real quick and even this out so it's one smooth, straight, long cut. Now it's nice and straight. Get rid of the burrs. Much better looking. So we know we're going to be gluing here and here. Go ahead and pre-sand it. It's all things pencil mark. This is where clamps really come in handy, though. So that's the area I know I'm gluing. Repeat on this side. Okay, now we have a little bit of overlap at the top. 
if you want to be all accurate and stuff, you can scoop this down a good bit and have it come back, whatever. That's up to you. So we're going to use the sips for that. I just kind of bring it up and angle it, level it all off. And these are uneven down here. So we just even that up going straight across. The belt covers it anyway. There we go. So that's the base abdomen. Next is going to come the extension strips. So we know we're going to be gluing here and here. I'm going to go ahead and just pre-sand these. I'm wiping off the dust with this because you're going to get a little bit of dust and you don't want to be gluing down dust to dust. You want to be gluing plastic to plastic. So that's all the towel wiping is. You can do it with your hand, you can do it with a shirt, you can do it with a rag, you can do it with a towel, doesn't matter. So this is how this is going to end up setting up. And this is the one thing I can't really do by myself. This is going to be on me. So what I have to do is bring my lovely assistant over and she's gonna make some pencil marks for me. So when we're doing this, you're getting some help. Get it lined up in the center. Same thing back here. You want it lined up straight with your neck. You've got some playroom for adjustment in case you're a little bit off so that this square stays centered. Uh, the other option, now I'm doing this girdle style. All this is going to be one piece. I'm pulling it up and cinching in my big fat gut. Uh, if you want to, you can split this and then use this as an adjustment piece. I don't like doing that with the stormtroopers because the rear belt overlaps the front belt and that makes it very difficult to keep it all together and take on and off. I haven't really found a great system for doing that so the girdle style just seems to be the best for me. So carrying on here we're going to make sure that I'm lined up in the center. We're going to put this on in the back. This is where I want to be. I'm going to hand her a pencil. And we're going to turn around here a little bit. That feet Brian. Am I centered? That's all I'm really worried about. Okay. Then draw me two pencil marks. All done. We have our pencil marks. Let's remember which side is which. This was my left. I'm just going to mark them with lefts and rights. So I don't get confused. And which side is up. Since I have this lovely pencil mark, we're going to do another butt joint over here. I'm going to follow this pencil mark as perfectly as I can.
So we pre-sanded back here and get a little sanding here. Just go ahead and go over the whole piece. You may as well, it's faster this way. I know I don't need this much for a butt joint. So I'll probably trim off a little extra here. Let's trim it off over here. Getting plenty of extra plastic with your kits. Same as always here. Let's line it up. Get a pencil mark. Left side is in. Do the right side. I'm getting ready to put this part in, and this is why we needed good cuts and good pencil marks as we want to make this seam here as easy to fill as possible so we're looking good all over here That side's in. Pair it for this side here. So there is a complete torso to fit my stomach. The girdle style. It's gonna flip up here. Just go straight up and down. Let some stick my gut out, relax. Access some back support back here. And the only piece left is going to be gluing on this. Now, yeah, I got enough room. If you end up butt joining and your butt joins are back here and this covers it, you don't have to worry about it so much. If they're a little closer in right here, hold off on putting this part on until you filled these seams and sanded them. So, free sand. The life vice pressure. Then let's line this up with the center here. It's where our pencils are going to come in handy again. It's a nice guide point. Gonna use a little different accelerator here.
this will work for both. It's just different applications, different accelerators I'll prefer. And there we go. There's our mostly complete abdomen. All it needs now is seam filling back here. You can use regular Bondo if you want to. You can come in and use the super glue and sand it down. I'm going to Bondo it. I'm going to Bondo it off camera. Um, this is faster. And this is instant. I just like the Bondo a little better. It's easier for me to work with. All right. That wraps up our abdomen. We'll move on to the next thing. We're moving on to the next parts, we're going to go with the forearms. These are the most simple parts that we can possibly do. They are designed completely for overlap. So we're going to have one side of the smooth side that has an indent and one side that is a flat side. So the indented side goes on the flat side of the laddered forearm. The smooth side goes on the raised part of the forearm. That's going to determine what your left and your rights are and if you need to shrink these in for a little bit smaller of a wrist you can do that we're just going to permanently glue these together and start with the sanding So that's sanded. We'll proceed to gluing. Always sand before you glue. I always start with the indented side because we really don't need pencil marks to get that done. They're just going to line it up, make sure everything looks okay. You got any of the ugly rough, spot, rough parts off. And yeah, everything looks good. little clamp keep holding it on the inside and get a strong bond going now this other side you have some adjustment you can go full on in, you can bring it in a little bit more if you like. Got to keep mine a touch more narrow. Clamp it on. Do your pencil mark. If you need to, we can trim away some of this excess. No real reason to have it all.
So I'm lining up to this pencil mark here. Try to flamp. Keep holding pressure all the way to the back. bit on the inside that's good to go this is the left forearm but i'm wearing a watch and they got get it on yeah i can get it on there we go there's our left forearm done we'll save the cover strips for the later there we're again we're starting with this side Go ahead and pre-sand. Well, starting with this indented side, it's going to go here. Check it out. Why well, didn't cut off a little excess? Yep, little off. That's okay. Wow. You know, there's our right forearm sliding on. Well, that completes our forearms till we get to the cover strips. Back in the box and move on to the next part. Okay, continuing on with this Stormtrooper fast build, the next parts up are going to be the biceps. So oh, the biceps, there is really no left and right, up and down, and you can be Arnold Schwarzenegger and still be able to fit the side of these. So I know for a fact I'm going to have to trim these down for me. I have these puny little arms here, and we're just going to do an overlap assembly. That's always fun. It's a little easier to do it this way, just squeeze it together. Stick your arm through, kind of gauge where you are. Oh, we're going to have cover strips, and I want these to meet a little bit more in the middle. So I'm going to take roughly half to three-fourths of an inch off on each side to accommodate my skinny little arms. So just using a pair of snips. 
I'm going to go sh as straight down as possible. Get a little bit off. Now, you can butt join these together if you find them right in the middle and then use the cover strip to cover that seam. I'm just going to be doing an overlap construction. So we'll take a look again, see about where we are, see if I need any more taken off. You do want to leave a little room. Don't ever try to make your armor skin tight like this. That's going to restrict movement. It's better to have it a touch bigger so you can have some padding. My cut's actually a little off right here, not quite perpendicular. That's a little better looking. Yeah, that's much better. So I like the way that looks, the size. Check to make sure everything's kind of centered. Everything looks right, like you're keeping your swoop details. But the first thing I'm going to do is pinch it. And give me some pencil marks. Now, you want to do these one side at a time. So that's how much we have. This is how much we know we have to work with. Sandpaper. These are our glued edges. And something else I want to point out on this piece specifically, got a little bit of light orange peel right here where the sheet got overheated or there's a little bit of moisture in it. Um, this is taken off super easily. Like if it's extreme pitted orange peel, it's usually not sent out. But something like this, this is so minor that either a little bit of sandpaper going to pretty much take it right off. Now I need to find my other sandpapers. To smooth it over. There. There's some 400 grit. Smooth it back over. There. See? No more orange peel. It's gone. We've got our sanded sides. Again, we get to that pencil mark. We test fit. Make sure we know where we're going. Glue. Glue that doesn't come out. Clamp in place. Now we can size up this other side. I wanted a little bit looser than that, but it was pretty good.
and done it. There's a whole left bicep. So those resin cover strips are going to end up going straight down that line right there to hide that seam. If we were butt joining it, it'd be more about right here and just cover up that seam. Um, if you have anything that's over, see, I'm more concerned about lining up on the bottom since this will be exposed over the top. We got a little excess. Just snip it off. So this is covered by the shoulder bell. It doesn't really matter too much. So I'm going to leave it out and repeat on the other side. So, other than fitting it on your arm, another way to check your size is just hold it up next to your other piece that you did. So, see if we're about equal. And this way we know we're, we're kind of in that ballpark for symmetry. I like to make sure these parts are lined up right. We'll do a quick test fit. We ought to be okay. I'm going to pull it out just a touch. That fit is pretty good. See where I moved my thumb, I had a little super glue on it. That won't matter too much because it's going to get the cover strip. But you get a little something like that on there. Give it a quick sand. Gone. You're going to need to sand these anyway for the cover strips. So that's where they'll be. So we got a left bicep, a right bicep, and I'm a stormtrooper. So these are done. Let's move on to the next part. Um, we have all these little cutoffs. You can always save these. Scrap plastic always comes in handy. We have plenty of scrap plastic around here. They're getting pitched. <clears throat> so next parts I'm going to cover are going to be the chest and the back, which include the shoulder straps. So we fitted the abdomen a little while ago, and one of the normal things that I see like from day one over 20 years is when people get their kits, they usually end up fitting their chest and their back first. That is one of the worst mistakes you can possibly make. You have to fit your chest and your back over your abdomen. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a lobster bib dinner plate right here, uh, or it's going to be riding a few high. Everything's not going to work together at that point. So we save this for last. But with this guy in specific, uh, there's two ways we can do this. We can permanently attach the shoulder straps to the front and the back, or we can permanently attach the shoulder straps to the rear and leave the front removable. For storage purposes, I prefer leaving my chest separate. Uh, it fits all in my armor bin a little bit better. Everything nests a little bit better. And whatever goes in the bin, it could kind of just stack like this and saves a lot of space. Uh, can keep you from breaking any shoulder straps you have. So these are pretty simple. What you're going to need 
is your Dremel tool with cutoff wheel, wear eye protection. You know, do as I say, not as I do. Now, all I did with this was cut two lines. I'm going to use this little pair of snips and get the rest of it out. Maybe. It's not want to get in there. There we go. And we'll clean up the mess we made with a melted plastic going in your face. Start test fitting these. Yeah. So they're going to fit into there. Just like this. So where do we want to glue them? I'm not going to use the wedge to glue. I'm going to glue directly down to the armor here. And we'll show you another method of attachment too. In fact, I want to clean some of this up a little better. It's kind of ugly. Metal file can come in handy. Okay. So we're going to glue on the shoulder straps. The sand here. And here. And we're going to go ahead and sand the inside here. I'm going to go ahead and do both sides while we wait to see what the alignment is going to be. Now, with the shoulder straps, there's kind of a left and a right. I kind of curve a different way. You're fine if you're off a little bit. Because it's so hard to tell. It's going to end up being personal preference. And do one for the front, one for the back. That looks pretty good to me. <clears throat> going to just embed it a little bit here. See, it will adjust as far down as we need. Again, with the pencils, so we know where we're gluing. We know where to realign. Some glue in. Now I'm squeezing hard here. Shoot some accelerator in. Okay. 
That one's good. Before I permanently adhere this one, I want to take a look at it. Make sure everything's lined up. We look good. Squeeze hard. Sure, I felt that shift on me. Good thing we have plenty of room. Now, let's do some reinforcement. You can see we have open spots right here. So we're just gonna take a couple of pieces of nylon, black nylon, and glue it down this way. Just in case something fails, you have a reinforcement. Now, I did not flash and burn the in edges because I want the super glue to penetrate into those edges. Basically, I'm not worried about it unraveling. So we see how far down it's going. You can also put the glue on the nylon itself. And I'm going to put some over the edge as a last bit of extra reinforcement. So, Pete on the other side. All right. That is attaching the shoulder straps to the back. As it sits, and go right on my back, no problem. We're gonna use the Dremel again to get a couple of slots. One. See if I made these wide enough. That could be a little wider. No. No. 
Here we go. So if we're doing a separated fit after it gets painted, take some more of that nylon strap. And I'm going to do extensions coming off this way, wrapped in Velcro, and then it'll meet some Velcro down here to ensure everything stays on. But that's about it for the chest and the back. We'll move on to the next part. All right, welcome back to the next phase of building your own Rogue One Stormtrooper. So now we're gonna be covering all of the resin components. First things first, let's take inventory and catalog what we have. <clears throat> I have everything laid out right here. These are your bicep cover strips. These are your forearm cover strips. This is the hamstring cover strip. This is the front of the thigh cover strip. These four right here are all the shin and calf cover strips, front and back. This is the thermal detonator mount. This is the circle detail for the back plate. This is the two bar detail for the back plate. This is the thermal detonator detail cover. This is the abdomen center detail. The left side of the abdomen detail the right side of the abdomen detail. And this is how they're gonna come right out of the box. They're gonna have a shiny back. The first thing we have to do is take them over to wash and get them all washed down before we go and sand them. Now we're cleaning and washing these to remove any of the residual mold release that's used in the casting process. We have to use a mold release and silicone rubber molds to pour in urethane resin and it just leaves a residue. You can't paint on top of it. Nothing will stick to it. So we run it through here, get all the degreaser off of it, and then we go over and sand it. You never want to sand when you have fresh mold release on it because you're going to impregnate the resin parts with mold release and you're going to have paint issues. So to get into the washing, it's actually really simple. The primary thing you're going to be using is going to be using a degreaser like Simple Green. You can use Purple Power, or orange degreasers, anything of that nature. I'm gonna do it in a shop sink, running hot water, and using a little scrubber. Just about any scrubber will work. You can use a toothbrush if you want to. We're gonna get the hot water going. Start over here at one end and just work my way down. Squirt it down really well. And then scrub it. You know, we're going to scrub it underneath the hot water. All right, now we're done cleaning. Uh, we're gonna. If you've watched our podcast, you're gonna hear us talk about building props. And the main thing we do when we're building props is sanding. Lots and lots of sanding, different types of sanding: palm sanding, hand sanding, fine sanding, uh, oscillating sanding, and belt sanding. So, if you're really into this hobby of building stuff. This is the number one tool you really need to go buy is a belt sander to put in your garage. We use this for everything. And we are going to be using it now to remove the shiny surface. You can't glue to a shiny surface and plane off any of these parts. You saw in the, in the um, mold area where we cast these, these are all open molds. So they're not always exactly the same height. And that's what we're going to use to correct on the belt sander. The next thing we're going to do is sometimes our molds deteriorate a little bit. And we get little tear outs and whatnot. We don't replace this mold quite yet. 
because this kind of stuff can just be sanded off pretty quickly. When it gets bad enough, we go ahead and replace it with a new mold. So let's get on with the belt sanding. That concludes all our belt sanding. <clears throat> we have all the shiny bits done. Parts are leveled off for the most part. And the little blemishes and defects that were here, the major parts are gone. We'll use a palm sander at this point to go ahead and clean up the top of the parts. So now for more sanding. <clears throat> we're just gonna be going over the surface of the part so the paint has something to stick to, pull away any additional blemishes. Now, some parts are gonna end up having some little imperfections and whatnot in them. We're not too worried about those areas right now. When we go to the final assembly, we'll like put a little putty over those areas, but we will do things like sand down seam line. So, commence the sanding. I'll be using about 120 to 150 grit paper right here. You may have to pick up some sandpaper and sand a few parts by hand because the angles are a little awkward. I'm just going to run over it real quick to get any shiny rough coats off and move on to the next one. All right, there's some fine details in some areas where you can't always get with a palm sander, and that's where hand sanding is going to come in. I'm just going to use a little bit of 150 right here and go around the surface of the areas where I don't want to really lose any detail. And this is just to be sure that we get good paint adhesion. All right, that's about it for the hand sanding. Uh, we can come across and, you know, do these next two. That was really all the fine detail we had to worry about. Doesn't hurt to scuff up the surface here. We're going to do one more little minor step. And use some compressed air and blow off any excess dust. Okay, that's it. All our parts are cleaned up. They're ready to go. Now we can move on to getting these done and a little bit of final assembly before we move on to paint. Now we are on to the final stage of assembly that involves resin cover strips, fine detail parts, and some of the leftover assembly parts that we didn't have. First thing, let's cover materials. Super glue and accelerators. These are some of the primary things we're gonna use for assembly. 
And next to that, it's our paid sponsorship by Surebonder and their high temp glue systems. If we're using hot glue, we do not use strictly off the shelf fabric store hot glue. There is a special formulation. Use the black sticks, number 707R510B. It's on the Surebonder website. No, this is not a paid sponsorship. I've been using this stuff for about a year since we discovered them at Dragon Con last year. They gave us some samples. We liked it. We built a few things with it. I think this is our only our third box that we're on right here because super glue is still a staple. It's pretty good, but we don't use it for every application. You still have to sand before you glue anything down. So we got this one heating up and we are using their cordless glue with um, extra batteries just in case. Keep some sandpaper handy and our good trusty pencils because we pencil mark just about everything. All right, what do we want to start with? Start with something really easy. We'll start with the back. The back gets the circle and the two bars. There's no real specific place to put this. It's all eyeball. There's, there's no insets, nothing like that. We're going to put it over. Go ahead and put them both in. Make sure you get this right side up. So stormtroopers, these go down. Death troopers, these go up. Make sure they're that way. And just kind of eyeball it to start. Make sure everything looks even. Okay, happy with it. So I'm going to pull this. Pencil. Now the other one, I'm go ahead and put it back down. Everything looks even. Tan paper. Done. <clears throat> See, that's not so bad. All right, so let's move on to a couple easy, a couple more easy parts. We'll start with the biceps. My wonderful tray of cover strips over here, and a special tool we may need later. <clears throat> when we were going over the assembly, we did the overlap assembly, so your alignment's going to be pretty good. You're either going to come up right on the edge or you'll be able to move over the edge a little bit to make sure it's centered. So one of the first things that I'll do is go ahead and clamp one side on, take a look at it. Hold the other side up in the general area where you're gonna put it and make sure you have even spacing on both sides. Make sure that alignment's gonna work until I can kind of drop this one down a little bit. So I'm satisfied with that. Remove my clamp. Make sure everything is lined up right. Pencil mark. Sandpaper. and a little bit of glue. Get 
get a good little squish. I like this hot glue for this because it's permanent, but you have a little bit of adjustment time versus using the super glue and accelerator. Sometimes when you're putting out super glue, it'll automatically lock down parts and then things can end up crooked. So at least with this, I can break it back off fairly easily if I need to. Well, let's come back to the other side and then get it in the general area. Make sure the alignment's good. Clamp it, pencil it. Sand it. And glue it. Apply some pressure. And now we have one bicep ready to go into paint. We'll P procedure on the other one. All right, and both biceps are ready for paint. Move on to the forearms. All right, so the forearms, we got one side that's flat and one side that's open. We're gonna start with the side that has the edge, the open edge right here. We know the alignment's gonna be like on this. We have wiggle room to work on this side for the alignment. Go ahead and sand it down. And I like sorting my biceps or my cover strips here based on thickness. And sometimes you have one edge that's a little bit more tapered than the other. So I try to put the smaller tapers towards the ends if I can. And test fit. You, you can pencil mark this. I probably will here in a second. But I like to test fit, check alignment. Make sure everything works before you ever glue anything down. Dry, there's nothing wrong with doing dry fitting. Well, I have a good guideline to follow. Press it in real well. I'll repeat on the other side. Let's look and see what we have. We're covering the seam. And I want to make sure they're about as even as possible front and back. The emperor would not approve Okay, now we have forearm cover strips. Okay, let's wrap up the other forearm. Go ahead and start with the sand. You know what, why not? Go ahead and just sand the other side. We know we're gluing it. Go ahead and line up the side with the raised strip. Flip that around. That yeah, looks better that way. Okay, one side's in, put the other one on, get it roughly lined up, check to make sure we're kind of centered on both sides, clamp, 
pencil. It's already sanded. Okie doke. Now we have a nice set of forearms. Forearms and biceps are now done. We'll move on to the abdomen. Let's start with our abdomen. Centerpiece. Left side. Right side. So just starting out, dry fit. Make sure everything goes in. All right, it's a touch wide. No problem. Break the sander back out. So it needs a little bit more. Could do this faster on a belt sander. Much better. Yeah, now it's going in. To get it lined up, you want it lined up on the bottom edge. Pencil marks are simple. Top. And running along this whole strip. Those are the areas we're going to sand. Then I'm just applying pressure from the back end. If you want some extra security, drop some super glue down in there. Just to show y'all. I'd rather do this with a fine tip. Let it run down. Just a little extra security. So the right side, line it up with the bottom. I'm sure it's kind of centered. Pencil marks in place. Sand. Some glue in and align to the pencil marks. So now the left side, just repeating procedures. Center it up, line it up at the bottom and with the other parts. Little rubber. Sand it down. All of those pencil marks. You go. Now we have a completed abdomen ready for paint. I'm just now realizing that there's one component in this build series that was not built. This suit's being built with the intention of being an incinerator trooper, which doesn't need it, but that's going to be the canister. Um, I don't have one here in this kit at all. It didn't even get made for this kit. Uh, so we're going to be omitting that. This is the little canister in detail. Uh, but that brings me to the hardest thing that we're going to assemble on this entire kit. And that's going to be the canister mount and the rear belt. So when you get your kit, you've got between the three and three and a half inch strip by 37 inches long piece of plastic. This is strictly for your rear belt. And this is one of the last things we assemble after paint on the abdomen. So it's 37 inches long. I can break out the tape measure here if you want. You can try to find the exact dead center. Oh, yep, yeah, it's just over 37. So that's going to put my center here at about 18 and a half. You're going to take your resin canister mount. And just line it up dead center right there. Pencil mark around that. Sand it. Wipe it. Go ahead and super glue. 
way too much. And definitely see I got way too much super glue on that. It's all covered up by the canister. In my case here, it's going to be covered up by a incinerator tank things. And that's about it. Now, if you want to take this an extra step further, I highly recommend drilling through these two holes right here. And then whenever it comes time to mount your canister, pre-drill through the canister lined up with those and shoot a couple screws in the back. That way your canister is mounted. You never have to worry about it coming off unless somebody really comes behind you and tears it off. Well, that takes care of this. Next segment we're doing here is going to be the thighs. And we're about to break out what actually is some of the hardest parts of this build. And you're going to have to use a heat gun or a hair dryer to heat up some of your resin. Um, it's more prevalent when you're doing the cabs. You can kind of push it and bend it around here without much of an issue. So just to make life a little easier, we got the right thigh. I'm going to start with the rear. Grab one of the short strips. Figure out which one you want to be the top and the bottom. Doesn't really matter. And I like mounting it just on the edge. You only want maybe a quarter of an inch grabbing onto it. Gives you a little extra adjustment room. If you need to add a shim, you can glue some plastic on the inside. And that's where you can put Velcro. If you really look at your reference material, these are open in the back. They don't even close. So, same thing as always. We're lining it up, making sure we're happy with it. And draw on a pencil mark. Now, sand it. Now, in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and use some super glue. Line back up on your pencil marks. And hit it with a little accelerator. There's this one. We can come back in and do a little bit of trimming of the plastic right here to make it all look even and flush. We'll deal with that in a little bit. Now you're going to take your medium length. Figure out which one you want to be the top and the bottom. Sometimes it doesn't matter, sometimes it does. And you're going to run it in dead center. Now you see that there's some leftover plastic. We'll come back and trim that in a little bit. So it does bend. No need for heat yet. Clamping that in place. Pencil at the top and down the sides. Sand in that area. Wipe off any dust. We'll go ahead and use the hot glue here. I'm really getting down to that seam too where we butt joined it earlier. Help push it in a little bit more. We're applying pressure all the way. Make sure we really flatten out that glue. And we're good to go there. We had excess here, excess there. Bring out some heavy duty snips. Cutting back along this little edge that's over and meet it back down. We can take it over a bandsaw or use a palm sander to get the serrations off. For this side, kind of follow the same thing. Actually, I want to attack this going this way. So to clean all this back up, I'll take it over to the belt sander to finish it off. All right, so the left thigh is done. We're going to move on to the right thigh where there's a little additional assembly with the knee block. Well, just like the left, let's go ahead and start in the back. I may not have mentioned it with the left, but you're going to have that one side that overlaps. That's where your cover strip goes. Determine which one's top and bottom for you. Pencil it in. Dust it off. Thin be the glue. Lining it up to the pencil mark. I'll put a little clamp here. Give me ex extra hands. 
and get some accelerator down in there to button it up. All right, simple enough. Take our last medium strip and we're putting it dead center. Clamp it in place so I can do my pencil marks. Sand it down real well. Dust it off. Breaking out the hot glue again. Going dead center. Line it going down. Apply pressure from the back side. And it's grabbed on and held. Okay. Do a little bit of trim ups again. You know, I'm just going to do this side of the belt sander. It's not worth dealing with. This side. I had to get through all that plastic right there. Kind of follow it back around. Boom. Done. So we'll spare you from it for right now. We'll take this back over the belt sander, finish cleaning it off, any additional shaping that needs to be done, you know, round edges, things of that nature. That's going to bring us to getting the knee block on. So the other one, we filled the seam. This one, we don't fill the seam. And this is the knee block. What I like to do here is cut some scrap pieces of wood to act as fillers on the back end because this is what we're going to be gluing down to on the hard armor. These are actually a little shallow, so I'm kind of hoping that the glue actually catches. Before we glue these in, when sand down into it, I do the outside edges and the center. Wipe out any dust. Start on this side and get a healthy amount of super glue in there. Put our block in. And hit it with the accelerator. Repeat on the center. Healthy glue. Hot. That one got me. Mm. Yep, y'all need to be careful. That one got me good. So watch out. These are chemical reactions we're dealing with. Now, before we go putting this on, come in here and pre-bend. You're not hurting anything by doing some pre-bending. We've been doing this for 26 years, putting armor together. So we don't want to force it. And you're about to see why we put these blocks on. Now, you can use plastic instead. It's just we have plenty of wood laying around. I may end up having to back these with a touch of plastic. So I'm not sure if that's actually going to make contact. It's pretty close. Yeah, it's not going to make contact. I should have used some thicker blocks. I got a little bit of spare plastic right here. It's about the right width. I'll cut some panels. That's much better looking. There we go. Much better. Like everything, if you're going to do something like this, sand it. Now go ahead and sand the back end too, because we're going to be gluing it to the armor. Line it up here, dead center. You can see now that's covering the gap. And we're doing the plastic area up at the top. It doesn't go up too high. 
There's not a lot of area that's actually grabbing onto this resin piece, but this is the main thing we're gluing onto here. We know to follow this line. This area has already been pre-sanded. Not real worried about scuffing it up. Dropping a little glue. Lining it up. <clears throat> Shooting some glue in here. Give it about 10 seconds. Fully grab. Let's flip it over. And we got that gap to work with. I'm going to fill that gap in that whole area with super glue to really hold this down. I don't like things like this popping off. Give that a few seconds to cure up. If it does pop off, it'll just get glued again. So we got our left and our right sides. And it's gonna glue down about right in here. Where'd my sandpaper go? There it is. So sand that whole area. Dust it off. Let's get an eyeball on about where it is. little glue in that general area. Let's see if it grabbed. Yep. We grabbed. So hold it down again for 10 more seconds. Let's go ahead and do the other side. And see it's going to be about this area here. Sand it. See your area again, get a good mental picture of the area that it's in. Healthy amount of glue. Hold it. Shoot it. Hold it for 10 seconds or so while it grabs. Do the same thing we did to the center. I don't trust it. I don't ever trust things like this. It's going to kind of fill that area with some extra glue. And give it a shot. Repeat it on this side. There we go. Now we have a completed right thigh. Now this is the absolute worst part of this build and probably the part that I like the least whenever I'm doing these cover strips. So we're on to the calves. The front isn't so bad, kind of like the thighs, but the rear and getting this curve here is. That's what brings us to the heat gun. Now, if you know anything about resin, heat will make it flexible. Learned this the hard way 20 years ago by leaving a resin helmet inside a car on its side in the armor bin and it squished in just a matter of hours. Ever since then, we know that resin is heat malleable. So this is definitely where we bring in protection. You're going to need to wear gloves. I already know the areas that we're putting these down to, so let's just pre-sand it so we don't have to deal with it later. If we're doing the front. Ah, good. I grabbed the left one, so we'll go ahead and do the um, sniper knee while we're at it. And we know this is the left. It was already set up with the overlap. So we're doing it on this outside edge here. Going to preheat the heat gun. I'm using max heat, max fan. Take a cover strip. And move it back and forth to get a uniform heat. Do both sides. And turn it around. 
doesn't take too long and you'll see the strip starting to kind of curve down on its own weight. I'm doing the front on this, it's gonna need a lot less time than doing the rear, but it will be pliable. And see it's already starting to bend on its weight. It's doing that, I'll flip it. Yeah, it's definitely ready now. Line it up at the top. ahead and run a bead of glue. I didn't pencil mark, but I know about where it stops and it's going to cut off on the edge. There you go. There's the main cover strip. Repeat it and do it on the other side. Now, the thinner these are, the easier it's going to be to do your molding. More heat's going to penetrate. We want this one to be very pliable. We have to follow this curve just like this. So I come in and do a pre-bend. I know about the shape of it. It'll stay warm. Line it up at the top and follow that raised ridge down the back. We'll grab the other piece of armor. Squish it in. For the calf, there's going to be a part sticking out right here. Take your Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel and cut that off. For the part sticking down right here, same thing. Drop your armor on the floor first. Same thing. You're going to cut across here and then just follow this edge. And that, that'll make it complete. It'll save you all trouble of doing this on camera right now. Because this is the last thing we have to do. This is the left leg. We didn't do any seam filling on this. It's going to glue down on top of this. So let's line up about where I want it. Pencil mark so we know to stop. Sand the inside. We'll go ahead and sand the top of this resin for good measure. Super glue. Line it up with that pencil mark. Get your accelerator in, hold it down here for some good measure. Go. If we want some extra reinforcement, you can drop down some glue or some super glue. Just on the top edge. Give it something else to bite into. Oh, that pretty much completes. Uh, you know what? That's mounted too high. Good thing it was, wasn't completely set. I'm going to drop it down a little further. There we go. That looks a lot better. Nice to check for these things before you finalize any builds. Oh, you just get to see it again.
Not going to be able to rip it off this time. That's much better. Now it's a completed calf. So don't forget, come back in, use a Dremel tool to cut off the excess here and chop this off. We're going to go ahead and finish up the other calf. To sand it. A little bit of heat. Forget to flip. Saw that little bit of smoke from staying too long. Not going to kill it. It's not fun. Okay, we got some flexibility. Okay, front's on, feet on the back, get it a little hotter. Okay, it's nice and pliable, nice and floppy. I'm gonna do this pre-bend. Get some glue on. As soon as it decides to cooperate. Start at the top. Work your way down. I like hot glue here because it gives you that little extra time you may need to move things around. Get it set exactly where you want it. Well, just like the other one, you're going to have a little cut off right here and the edge to cut off right here. You can come back in with spot putty and fill any little imperfections, any pinholes you need, part of building a model kit. That's how these things work. Not everything's going to be perfect from everybody, no matter who it came from no matter how much you pay for it. So little imperfections are normal. Well, that's it. That is all the primary assembly for a Rogue One style, uh, series style, new production style Stormtrooper. From here, other than the little buttoning up things that we need to do, it's pretty much paint ready. So the next segment, we're gonna take you into how we do paint setup and the paint process that we use whenever we're doing all of our sets of armor. All right, so the next part on the painting of the TK Stormtroopers is we're putting ink sticks on all the pieces so we can clamp them down in the gate booth. Um, I'm working on the some of the like pieces right here. I like to put a stick there so when I clamp it it's up so if there are any drips it'll be more towards the bottom that's easier to cover up and then I also put a second small stick on the inside here to kind of hold it open so I can make sure I'm able to get this edge here and I'm able to get all this, so if this opens up a little or needs to be opened up a little more than anticipated, it's painted, it's covered, it's not a big deal. 
but it also makes it easier to paint in the off chance that I do have to stand it up. Um, if I have to paint it the other way, then I would stick this side, still put the small stick there, and then I would crop it on the edge like that, and that small stick also helps give it balance if you don't have somewhere where you can stick it and let it hang like this. But you definitely want to make sure you tape it good so it doesn't fall in the middle of the paint process because then that creates more work for yourself as you'll have to wait for everything to cure, sand it, start over again. Um, well, by start over again, it would mostly just be, um, depending on how far in the paint process you were, you'd probably just sand, and if you got to the single stage, you would have to let it cure, and then you could single stage it again, depending on how much you had to take off. Um, but this is probably one of the more time-consuming parts of the whole painting process, aside from sanding the helmet and such, filling in um, seams and stuff that need to be filled in. Um, this probably takes longer than, I would say, a grand total of all the painting, depending on how fast you are with the painting. Um, if you've been doing it for a while, like we have, it's pretty straightforward, fast process. Um, we're all pretty proficient at it. I've been doing it for a couple of years now. But as you see, now I'm using the Gorilla Tapes. So I don't need as much tape to hold it in place. So two pieces here will hold this just fine and I don't have to worry about it falling off or um, unsticking to itself. But I do like to do, now this one, I'm gonna tape down here because it's got the kneecap there um, and trying to tape it there that's just going to kind of get in the way of trying to paint this portion here and this portion is going to be a part that you see and you can't really hide so I want to make sure that I'm able to definitely paint that bottom piece there nicely um, but one thing one of the things I do like to do is I like to take a piece of the tape, roll it in itself, stick it on the tape, and then stick it in, and then put layers of tape on there because it kind of gives it extra to hold on to. And it keeps it, the stick in place while I'm taping so it doesn't fall over and get annoying. For the back piece here, I like, it could be a personal preference, I like putting a stick here for a place to grab onto. Um, you could put one here or here or even down here, but I like putting it here so it makes painting the shoulder strap stair a little easier. I can access it better and I'm not having to, you know, hold it at awkward angles. So like I was saying, I like to put it here so when I'm painting I can turn it and I'm able to paint the straps pretty easily with it here where if I were to have it here I'm having to kind of you know like angle it in a way I've got less chance of hitting something while I'm painting with it here but again it's a personal preference you could tape it whatever's more comfortable for you for me this is a lot more comfortable I'm able to maneuver it you know as I need and not risk accidentally hitting something while it while I'm painting and adding debris and whatever to oh. it. The abdomen, this one is a pain in the butt to paint, but I like to put two handles here and here just so I have something to grab while I'm painting it and Kind of maneuvered a little bit it's really awkward in the paint booth um but once you've done it a few times it's not so bad it's just tiring because it's so awkward
so. So as I'm taping, I do like to take a tack cloth and clean the area where I'm going to put the tape just to take all the dust off. Um, just so it has a better adhesion when you're taping the sticks on. And again, I'm using extra sticky duct tape, the Gorilla duct tape. Um, so I'm not needing to use as many pieces. Now, if you're using like just a regular duct tape, you're going to need more than two pieces of stick. Um, definitely recommend spend the extra money, get the Gorilla duct tape. It can hold all this much, much better. So like I was saying, this one is a little awkward. So I like having the two hand grips. You could put a third on there if you wanted to. Um, but I like doing the two, so when I'm painting, I'm able to, to paint what I need. I can get those little ledges there. Um, I can also get that. And then I can get both sides relatively easy between the two sticks. If I need to, I can stick a hand in here and kind of rotate it. And if I need a grip to grip it, I've got those sticks. Now, this one, if you've got a place that's fairly dust free, you could just lay it out and paint it, you know, as such. But with us having the booth with confined space, what I like to do is I try to make this as straight as possible, reinforced with sticks. So when I'm painting, I can prop one edge onto a surface. Yeah, I'm about right there. And I'll show you why here in a minute. There is a minor method to my madness. It's just it makes it easier for me to paint it. You might find a better method that works a little better than how I'm doing it. it up like this and then work my way down and it makes it easier it makes it a, a little bit better to handle and then you've got two in here and here you can handle it with so you're not touching the actual um, belt itself um, that's why I take this the way I do again it's a personal preference um, Everyone does things differently, but that's why I do that the way I do. And then the chest piece here. This one is also a couple of different areas you can take down however you want. Again, um, it's not super important where you need to put the sticks on the chest piece here. I just like, like I do with the back piece, I like to stick it there. Because again, maneuverability, I can, you know, I'm able to turn it anywhere I need where it is and not hit anything with it. So, again, I'm able to reach everything I need and not risk hitting anything and messing up the paint. 
So on the shoulder bells, I like to tape them there because the paint sticks fit perfectly in that groove there. And then I tape it down and it gives it, you know, more um, um This is so you can either clamp it to something and let it sit like this, or you can have it hanging and it will stay. So as you can see, it's stable if you decide to clamp one on something like this so it's dangling like that, or even if you wanted to hang it like this, it's not gonna go anywhere. And it's a good grip point because you're able to reach again everything without risking hitting yourself with it and messing up the paint. Yeah, for the forearms, I, I like to tape it here. So again, when I'm painting, I'm able to reach everything. You could do it here, but with that cut there, you run the risk of accidentally hitting something. So like, I like to do it on the longer in there. Biceps, again, I like to do it there. Good grip, less risk of accidentally hitting something when turning it around to paint the entire sides and such. Now, depending on which that you decide to get. There's two different hand pieces you can get. Um, you can get the 3D printed, better details, or you can get the vacuum formed ones. I, they're still nice, but it depends on which one you get in your kit. Um, kind of depends on how you can um, tape them up. And kind of tape them like that. Have two individual, or you can tape them on the same stick on a bigger one. Yeah. In the hope of either. Okay. I, I mean, yeah. Now with adding that extra um, thing on the stick, something small like this, it gives it extra grip because you really only have enough room to stick one piece on here. That way it's not falling off in the middle of painting. Now this one, like doing the two, you tape them like this if you want to do it on one stick. And so this is the one stick method. You're able to hold both ends so you can paint, you know, both sides relatively easy. Now, this one doesn't have to be anything too, too fancy like we did with the other part of the belt. This one can be just a simple stick, whatever is convenient for you. I like to stick it here in the middle. And again, that's just my personal preference because um, I do stick it to um, hooks that are in the wall to hold it so it's not a 
laying down on anything. This is so I can clip it on an edge and then just sit like that. With this being smaller, it can handle, you know, the one stick. I don't have to do anything fancy like the longer one. I'm able to fully manage it right here in the middle. I can get both sides, no problem. You could stick it here, but that makes it a little more awkward. Or if you were to tape it similar to how the other one can make it a little easier for you to grip. Personal prepping in that regard. And then we've got the cod piece. This I tape very similar to how I do the shoulder bells. I stick it right there. Because this is another piece that you're going to want to hang. Uh, how you hang it depends on you. Um, you can hang it like this or clip it and have it sitting like this. I prefer doing it like this. So if it drips, it drips on the edges here. And those are easy enough to clean up and take care of. Whereas if you were to tape it or clip it like this, you're going to have the runs right here and everybody's going to see that. So how you tape things can also help. Um, you work around runs if you do have runs in your painting um, in the way you tape it and the way you set it up. That's why I do it the way I do. Again, everybody's different. Everybody has their own sinking process. This is just mine. So like the cod piece and the shoulder bells. We're going to do the same thing to the butt plate. So this one, uh, you can kind of lay flat when you paint it or, again, clip it like this just because if it runs, you want it to run on the tip here because you can shave that off no problem. Whereas if you were to hold it like this, it's going to run right there. It's going to make it look like you get a butt crack. And then you've got the little side wings here. Now these get bulldog and primered and then they come out of the paint booth and they get painted black. So they go in with the rest of the pieces, but they get taken out after the primer portion of the painting. This, you tape like this um, because you are going to clamp it like that when you are painting it. You're not going to want to lay this down anywhere or it will cause a mess. And then you have to do more painting and more work and that's never fun. Now these you could do individual or you can do on one stick. I like to do one stick so I can knock them both out at the same time. So if you do a TV and do, or the single stick, I like doing it like that. So I've got something to grip in the middle and I'm able to do what I need. I can do it like this, skip this side and that side. So I'm able to do both of them at the same time, but at least I can quickly. And these, you don't have to clip anywhere. You could just set right down and they stay off of whatever surface it's on. As long as you tape it relatively balanced, it's not gonna touch anything. And even if it does, it's the back side that touches the, um, whatever surface and it doesn't matter if the back side gets messed up it's not getting painted anyway you might have overspray no big deal nobody's gonna see it all right it looks like i've got all the taping done um for the helmet you want to sand it really good um so any um holes or seams you've got that need filling um this i 
did um, some filler on a couple of bubbles that were in the mold um, and just to smooth it out so you wouldn't see the seam of the helmet and a couple of oopsies I did when I was cutting out the lenses um, and then uh, I went down and sanded it some more with 800 grit so you can kind of see a slight shine to it and you kind of want that when you're wanting to do single stage um, because that like marble like surface helps the paint stick much better and you get a much much better shine um, like with our death trooper helmets that we did over there uh, it's a butt ton of sanding but as you can see it's much much prettier um, it is a lot of extra work but you do get a really nice looking helmet out of it and that's what we want because the helmet's one of the easier pieces to mess up and have to repaint a few times so how i've got everything laid out but um, there's a small method to madness uh, the shoulder bells I've got laying flat like that. So, I mean, you could, this, you can set it on a surface, but with this being uh, not a super smooth surface, uh, you can sometimes get debris on the edges there, um, or if it, if you do get drip, it can um, pool, and then you have to, that's just more cleaned up better safe than sorry. Uh, the butt plate, I did like this, up again, you know, kind of propped up against the wall like that. So if it does run, it's gonna run down here, which is easy cleanup, but I'm not likely to see the top piece of this. Um, because it's gonna be in by the belt. The, now the resin, um, hand armor, the ones I single staked, I put down like that. So um, it doesn't pull on the edges and take it off. Now these, I like to try and prop them on um, different sticks. I haven't got another stick in here to put it on. Um, just so if it does cool, it pulls on the wood, which is much smoother than this here. The belt I've got laid out, the torso I've got here, just so it's kind of out of the way. Now the bicep and forearms I've got clipped here, and um, I've got them like this, so if there are runs, again, it's going to be on the inside where you're not necessarily going to see it. You can do better cleanup on it. Now the side wings I've got here. They're gonna get primer, like I said earlier, they're gonna get painted black, so those get taken out after the primer gets put on. The chest I stuck here. I did clay it down just because, you know, if I accidentally knock it, it's not gonna fall onto the floor, which will be wet later uh, once I get started. Uh, so that way it's secured, it's not gonna fall over. Same thing with the back piece here. I've got it clipped. Um, that's another reason why I like to clip it up here. So the back piece is on the edge here. And then the shoulder bells, already went into that. And then the cod piece I've got clipped here. So if it does run, like I pointed out earlier, it's gonna run on the ends there, which is super easy cleanup, not a big deal. You're not gonna see the edges as much. Uh, as far as the legs, and thighs I've got clipped on the table. I ran out of filling space, but I have them in the downward angle. So if it does run, um, it's a little easier to clean up. And if I do have to do a little bit of cleanup, it's easier to redo. Um, because it's gonna go, I guess with a the theoretical grain, I guess is what you could say. So it's easier to stand out and then repaint. Um, then we've got the, oh, 
Fat piece for another kit that we're doing. It's also going to get single staged as well, which is why it's in here. We have it on our makeshift thing. Um, no, that we have it like that. So as we paint it, uh, I'll take it off, obviously, paint this bottom side first, and then it goes back on. Well, goes back on, and then it's just a matter of turning it around as needed when I need to paint it. So it's as pretty as we can make it. Um, the bottom, we've got a little leeway on. If we asked it to step it up, um, in the process of doing everything, not the end of the world. The big part is going to be a part that is going to be facing out in these top pieces and the side pieces. If we make little woo-woos on the downside here or this back, not the end of the world. Um, but we kind of get away things as we need to. Now for the helmet, when I get ready to paint that, um, finish. Wipe it down real quick. Um, now the helmet we put on a little turntable, so when we paint the helmet, um, we first paint the under the the lip first. Get all that we can here, there too. Make sure we get that real good, and then very carefully stick it back on. Readjust it on the top, and then just spin and spray. It makes it easier all around. Um, anything like that per se, whether it's helmets or other things that we have like kind of mounted, we'll use the turntable to turn it around. Uh, just so it's easier to paint, easier for us to like live over around and stuff. Um, and that's about it for how and why I've got everything arranged the way I do. So before we start really painting anything, um, we gotta make sure we wipe everything down really, really well. I've already wiped everything else down. These were just stuck in here kind of last minute. Um, but you wanna make sure you're wiping all this out really, 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 really good. So the paint will stick to the piece itself, not the dust that's left on it. And that way you don't get flakes or chips later on. And then our next step is going to be we spare everything with Bulldog. So um, when we start painting, all the paint sticks to the pieces better, especially on the printed or formed pieces like the resin. It helps all the paint stick better to it. Um, if you have a better base, you're obviously going to have a better pop coat, um, better adhesion, and um, less likely to chip. Now, if you're writing below, um, definitely hit any resin parts um, for sure, because resin can be a little tricky on um, holding on to any, any sort of paint. Um, but as long as you get a good primer down on it, rest and painting should be fine, but this helps that primer stick to it. Um, after I spray the Bulldog, I go straight to priming everything with the gray primer. Again, we use automotive paint because it's much more durable. Um, it can handle scuffing and whatnot, um, and it just lays much, much flatter than um, just a normal rattle can. Now, if we do use spray paint, we um, prime everything with the car primer, with the automotive primer, 
and then uh, any other paint after that is it too big of a deal if we decide to use spray paint or some of the accenting it's still going to stick well here um, we're still going to have that nice finish uh, but like the primer is a big thing to um, make sure you do right because that is the little base of everything so if you mess the primer up everything else is going to get messed up too now after we get the primer um, we let it cure we look over everything see if we need to do some light sanding to smooth everything out now again this is if we're doing um, the high gloss single stage at the end um, after we make sure all the pieces look good, lightly stained and everything smooth, then we go on to the base coat. Again, more automotive paint. Um, you only need one coat. You don't need to go all trigger happy with it. One coat will be just fine. Yes, it may not look like it's covered enough, but um, this base coat gives the single stage a much better rip when you lay it down it lays down much much better when you have base coat like a white base coat or a black base coat depending on what color you think um it helps it stick better and it lays flatter and um it does help with some of the rides after we do the base coat base coat dries pretty quickly um with the base coat it's what you want one part paint one part reducer and pretty simple you are able to store any that you've got left over um, you are able to safely store it for later use now when you get to the single stage white or black um, this is a chemical pure uh, chemical cure not an air cure uh, so as soon as you mix it you've got a set amount of time uh, to use it before it goes back uh, so you definitely want to be careful with how much you, you mix at a time. It is perfectly okay to mix small batches and uh, make more than to make one big one and have a whole lot of waste. This stuff is not cheap. So a little does go a long way. With this single stage, you want to be very careful. Um, you want to make sure you do light coats and build on those light coats until you get that smooth finish. Uh, if you go too heavy, you will get rugs, and you will have to do more sanding and more painting. Now that we are done with painting, we're going to move on to the strapping for the final assembly. We're starting here with the abdomen because this is the most complicated part of it all. The general strapping isn't much of an issue. Uh, the issue comes in with the belt. So we'll go over a few points here. Uh, first things first, we're going to do some suspender strapping with parachute buckles over the top of the abdomen. Then we're going to thread our drop boxes here with some nylon and get them in place. Uh, before you start your assembly, you can do this before you paint too. I like to take the belt strip and roll it up and leave it clamped for a few days to kind of get a natural curve to it. What really makes this so difficult to do is the rear belt overlaps the front of the belt and that's the contact point. A traditional stormtrooper belt uh, pretty much assembles from the back end and then wraps around and closes from the rear. The you know Rogue One style and new production style it's just a little different. It is an odd point that we have to deal with <clears throat> but we figured out how to deal with it at this this stage. It's not that bad. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get the upper strapping done. So I've taken a couple pieces of nylon and a couple of parachute buckles. And it's going to come around here. You know we're going to want it right around the front section. Right in here. We'll take a pencil, mark that area where the strap is going to go in, and some sandpaper, sand that area. 
sure it's wiped real well, and then super glue and accelerator that nylon down. So drop in some super glue first. The lot is getting really low over here. Then I like to wet the end. And it's difficult to see here on camera. Uh, where it was put in, I wet the end real well. Make sure, make sure the uh, frayed nylon gets saturated and go ahead and give it a squirt for a rapid cure. And then take some more glue, go ahead and put it on the end of the nylon. It'll cure really fast if you put it down where the um, accelerator just hit. And then fold it over. Give it a squirt. And then over that area, some reinforcing glue over the top. And that's cured. Then we're going to do the same thing on the right side. And I generally put these down this middle section here. That's a pretty good place for them so that front section is nice and secure and we'll move on and do the back and it's going to run about there and there it's going to pre-sand so i don't have to work around it that'll be the long side of the suspender strap lay it down pencil mark Saturate the end, quick squirt, and then go over it with a little additional for security. And once that's glued in place, you can thread them into the adjustable parachute clips. Now you do have options here. You can go straight across if you just want standard suspenders or you can crisscross them if you want some extra support. Uh, this is the primary thing that's gonna be holding up your abdomen section and they're fully adjustable. So next we're gonna move on to starting to assembling the belt. The first thing we're gonna do here with the belt is go ahead and put our drop down boxes or thread our nylon through for our drop down boxes. This is probably the most difficult part of threading nylon we're gonna deal with. But I've got a hole in the top, hole in the bottom, and I'm just gonna do my best to work it in one way or the other. In fact, I'm gonna open it up a little bit more just so it's easier to get through. There we go. So I'm just looping these around so that they hang and dangle. And if you want to get really cheeky, you can take these and go sew them. We're just going to proceed with super glue and accelerator. And it's really just looped around for some security. Now, the reason I super glue nylon together is nylon is plastic and super glue holds really well with plastic. So I'm not worried about that bond. I have seen stitching come out of nylon. So there's my dangly drop boxes. And these are the things that make the loud clanking noises in your uh, thighs every time you walk. Before, from the rear, we uh, shot a few screws in. I did shoot these down here really low, so I'm actually going to back these out and move them up a little bit higher and then do the kind of the same thing that I just did with these. This is probably something I should have done before paint, but didn't really think of this 
step until um, I actually got here to assemble it. Well, Now, as you can see there, I forgot to put on my eye protection, so you be sure to get yours before you do things like that. Hot plastic flying in your eyes is not a fun experience. All right, we're gonna do the same thing that we did to thread here. difficult to work through but it'll come through there we go let's see if that's actually a good look for it I'm trying to pull through a double section so it's a little tough to get through these slots and be a little easier if you make your slots wider uh, that's a decent length I really only want about half an inch that's a lot better so we'll go ahead and adhere this side down using the same methods with super glue It'll almost go right on top of the nylon here. Now there's one major thing I'm not doing here when I'm super gluing the ends of my Velcro. I'm not flashing the edges. Now what's flashing the edges? Flashing the edges is burning the end, frayed ends of your nylon so it doesn't continue to fray. In this case, I want it flashed. In that case, I don't want it flashed because I want that super glue to penetrate into the fabric. So it has more sticking points. So now these are done. Flash, that's just your basic flashing. Like these ends down here didn't get flashed at all. But up here, this is gonna be exposed. This is gonna fray over time. So that is what it is. See if we can proceed with the other side, <clears throat> save myself some trouble, and go ahead and widen this slot while I'm at it. Mmm, <sighs> face full of dust. It should be a little easier to get in these slots are wider. In fact, that was a lot easier. So be sure to make your slots wide enough. <clears throat> you can see this fraying here. That's why we like to flash the edges. It can be a little difficult to deal with. So before I glue this side down, I want to make sure both these ends are even. Up a little higher. Yeah. There we go. There's my clankers. You definitely don't want to flash your edges after you put on some accelerator. Let it cure, let it dry completely. Accelerator is flammable. Ask me how I know. Well, that is going to be our essential completed front belt. Uh, I do like them to flop. I do like them to be mobile. You don't want this to be a stiff attachment. Doing things like this will let you sit down in your armor. So we're going to move on to the, one of the next tricks. Uh, I'm going to cover trimming these down whenever we get to the actual assembly of the abdomen. Now there's a couple of things here with the abdomen and putting on the belt. So I like to cheat a little bit. 
and I'll use some EVA foam and glue that around the outside edge of the armor. Now what this does is it pushes out your belt far enough from your abdomen so that these tab connectors uh, can actually sit over easily. Uh, it's just a little trick that I've done over the past couple of years. I enjoy this method. I do it with shore troopers and tankers. It, it's just one little extra thing that you can do when you're building your armor. And before you go gluing that down, hey, we've used automotive paint. Now, we really should have masked off this bottom area first because that would prevent me from sanding. And with the automotive paint we use, you know, we've got like five layers. We've got Bulldog, we've got 2K primer, we've got base coat, then we've got single stage. Sorry, that's four. I forgot how to count. Uh, sanding through all those layers is extremely difficult, but that also means your armor is not going to scratch easily. It's not like spray paint at all. Spray paint and come up here and you got a scratch on it. This is an automotive finish. It's designed not to scratch. So let me come through here and sand away at this bottom layer. So after that, we're going to cut down that EVA foam going all the way around. With this much sanding I've done already, that's all that I've actually been able to remove. So this is some really good durable paint. It's gonna last a lifetime. It won't yellow, it won't discolor, uh, but just keep going around. We really don't need a whole lot, but I wanna, I'm sanding it back down to the bare plastic and this will act as a glue point because we don't want to glue down to paint when at all possible. When you glue down to paint, it's gonna pop. Usually you can just glue it right back down again and you're okay. Okay, all that sanded, let's wipe it off, get all the excess dust off before we glue anything down. And we're gonna start, see which piece I wanna use. I'm gonna start moving, or start gluing down, strip EVA foam. Just gonna center it up. I'm starting in the center. Now, y'all should be familiar with my affinity for pencil marks at this point. It didn't go all the way to the edge. I know it's gonna stop here. I know that's where my glue needs to stop. Start on this back side. You see we got a gap. You got your choice. You can take some scrap plastic and you can run it across here, or you can just trust the foam to bridge it directly across. I'm fine trusting the foam. I'm gonna measure it out. That's a pretty close approximation of how much I need. And that's gonna just bridge out to support the rear of the belt. Okay, our spacer's in place. That glue does need to set up for a little bit. It's still nice and hot, as my fingers can attest to. And we can start putting the front of the belt in place and do any trimming we need to do on these trim tabs. Uh, also, just like we sanded there, since it's overlapping and gluing in the front, we're, I'm going to sand down some of this glue that we, or some of the paint we have here, so it will glue down well.
Okay. So I'm going to trim these tabs down to where they're just barely visible. There's no reason to fight them when we're doing this suit. Try to keep them even. No, it wasn't. I'll round over these edges too. Hoping this hot glue is cooled off enough to work with. I'm pretty sure it is. And my main concern is just ensuring I'm centered in the front. So that's where I want to be. Don't forget to sand your backside. And I'm going to start by just gluing down the dead center. I don't want to try to do everything at once. I want to glue this down, let it hold. Now we wait. I have a pencil mark so I can see where I'm going to be ending. I know which area I'm working to. We'll go ahead and glue across this back side. And I'm being pretty generous with glue. And while that's down, just going to clamp it in place. Try to just work one side at a time. And I'll bring it over, pencil mark so we know where we're working with. So be sure to let your glue guns recover. We are spitting a lot of glue out. Okay, now I'm gonna let this set up really well. I want this glue to be completely dry, completely cooled off. I don't wanna deal with it anymore. Uh, so once this is set up, we're gonna move on to moving the back around and getting this adhered in place. Let's resume with the abdomen. This hot glue's had a chance to cool down. While we were taking a break, I went ahead and went in and just reinforced the inside with a whole bunch of additional uh, you can super glue and accelerator this if you want to, it's fine. I like this method because it gives you a little time for readjustment. The glue seems to stick down pretty well. And since this is wrapping around and completely enclosing everything, I haven't had any real issues with tear outs and trying to pull it off right now when it's just not going anywhere. But we're gonna go on and move on here to the backside. See if we got a good curve going. Yep, got a nice curve. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep leaving those clamps there for a minute. The whole key to this is just making sure that you are centered up with the back. That's really all you need to worry about here is be as centered as possible so your canister sits centered. Now, you see we have a lot of extra overlap. We're gonna cut that off whenever we are ready to glue that at the end. So I'm making sure I'm kind of just centered in the middle of the back rectangle and kind of with the front of the belt. And be sure I'm happy with what I see. And bring the glue in and douse it. I know y'all can't really see this right now, but I am dousing it. Dropping a couple clamps in place. And we'll kind of rotate it around. Work edges as we go. I've got a rough idea of where it needs to be and where it needs to be cut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some of this excess. I 
and I'm not fully trimming it. I'm just getting it a little closer and then I'll trim a little bit as I go back. You know, test fit, dry fit, absolutely everything that you do. It'll take you some time to get back to this level if you've trimmed something too much, which I hope I'm not doing right this second. Pretty close, yeah, I'm pretty close here. I brought it down to where it just barely meets right at the end of that box. Left some scissor marks. Oh, before I don't have access to it, I'm gonna sand it down, make it look a little prettier. And before I get in here, I wanna be sure this is how I want it, where I want it. Look at everything, be happy with everything. All right, I'm happy enough. So I'm gonna start gluing all the way down. And I got plenty of clamps here to help me too. Somehow, it's slightly shifted. While I have a chance and it's still warm, just moved it up a little. Clamp on that end. Okay. That's really about all I need over here. So we're gonna kind of start repeating the process on this other side. Maybe y'all can see it a little bit better from this angle. Start out. I'm gonna cut it. Hope I don't overcut it. I'm doing this one pretty close. Nope. Plenty of room. Still plenty of room. Almost there. There we go. That's where I want it to sit. We're gonna do the same exact thing all my clamps handy here. Start running some glue across. Now I'm trying not to go all the way to the plastic belt. That is where I want super glue and accelerator at this very end where these two meet here. So, other than having a lot of clamps, just kind of holding the belt in place until all that cures, that is a mostly complete Stormtrooper abdomen. The only details you have left is paint in some blue in here, graze up on these three, black inside there, and then mount your canister. Now you got these two canister, or these two holes here on the canister mount, drill straight through them, glue your canister down to that and then do two screws coming straight in from the back side so i'm going to just let this cure up we'll do test fittings and pictures and all that stuff a little bit later i can move on to the next thing i have one more thing i want to skim over on the abdomen real quick and that's the cod plate and the posterior plate i didn't go over these because i kind of do these a little bit more towards the end that glue is still setting up so let me just skim over how you do this real quick. You can do this just about any way you want. This is the way I prefer to do it for me. So you're gonna take some two inch nylon, super glue it down here. And if you're doing this for yourself, get it adjusted on the underside of the abdomen, make sure it's in position where you want it, and then super glue down the other end. That way your cod piece is always gonna be there. It's, all, it's gonna be permanent. And you're gonna do the same thing with the posterior plate. So nylon, get it in position on the other side, glue down the remnant, 
And then you're going to want to do a, a crotch strap going across here. You can do that with Velcro, another piece of nylon. Uh, you can glue in some elastic, whatever you need, whatever the uh, costume guidelines say you're supposed to do. Uh, these are really simple things to set up and user preference. It doesn't hurt to make your cod piece removable. So instead of gluing down the nylon permanently, put in some Velcro. That way, if you've got to go to the bathroom, you should, in theory, be able to get in there, pull off your cod, do your business, and uh, go on about the rest of your day. So we're gonna leave that alone. There's also a couple other little things we're just gonna end up skimming over because this is real basic assembly. Okay, so while I have the nylon out, we are going to go over thighs. Your thigh closures in the rear and your leg suspension belts are the two main things you have for this. So for our thighs, we need two more parachute buckles, your nylon. You're gonna do the same thing that we did with the upper abdomen. Measure out the nylon that you need here. I, I like a good three quarters to an inch. It gives you plenty of room to work with. Measure out your parts. And these are what are gonna glue on the inside of the thighs. These aren't going to hang like this. These are gonna be inset to where that clip is just riding on the inside. So when you're building your armor, try to account for this little bit of extra space. You wanna hide this clip. Uh, you can see other stormtroopers like um, the ones at the parks. You'll see these clips exposed on those first order stormtroopers. Now that's for easy access. This is for approval. And that's what you want to do. If you want to set up snaps or do straight Velcro, that's up to you. This is how I do it. Uh, before we get too crazy and, and doing any pencil marks, let's just pre-sand that area where we know what's in there. Just do it on both to make it a little faster, a little easier. Don't separate your clips and set it. I, I could see that mistake happening real, real easily where you set it like this and oh no, now you gotta cut it out. Just leave both sides together so you know where you're working. My favorite thing, the pencil. Set it in about the area where you want it. We know this is the stopping point right there. So a healthy amount of glue. We'll go ahead and use this stuff. My regular squirt bottle is getting a little weird. Quick squirt. That much is stuck. Get some glue on top of here. Put down your other piece of nylon. Give it a quick squirt and then brace it with some extra on top. And let it set real well. Repeat on this thigh. Now, I use curved buckles too. You kind of see it has a slight curve to it instead of straight buckles and try to buy these on Amazon. They're a lot cheaper. They're like two to three dollars a piece if you have to go to the fabric store to get them. Now, both of them are in. So one other thing with the thighs, I'm just skimming over this. Uh, there's no reason for you to sit here and watch me put Velcro on the back end, okay? Industrial Velcro, two inch wide, industrial Velcro, Walmart, 22 bucks, Amazon, 17 bucks. This is your staple, this is what you use. You don't have to use that full two inch width. You can use white, you can use black. Almost doesn't matter in this case. So you're gonna measure out your Velcro, cross back here, cut what you need, probably split that in half. Velcro here, Velcro here. If you need some extra room, 
glue plastic on the underside here and put your Velcro there. That way your parts will meet up like this. So that'll give you a little bit of extra wiggle room. Uh, if you turn out you have really big thighs and you're gonna take a lot of extra plastic here and like fill seams so you can make them just about any size you need to be. You're gonna do that same thing on your cabs. Just Velcro across the back, Velcro on the inside, and then get some uh, furniture padding on the insides of these. This will keep your parts from wobbling around. Same thing with furniture padding. Glue it onto the inside of the forearm. Keep it in place, keep it from wiggling around. That's about all you really have to do with a forearm. Didn't want y'all having to see me cut Velcro. Let's just save that. No point. Let's talk about how we're actually going to hold these legs up. So I use a leg suspension belt. And it's one of the most simple things that you can make. So we're gonna pull off our clips now. Take some two inch nylon. Measure it out on yourself. Give yourself a little bit of extra room. Cut it. Now, one end, whichever end's gonna be the open end, you need to go ahead and flash it. So, flash it. Yeah, I know it's hard to see, but we got fans and stuff running everywhere. It's very difficult to deal with it. I'm gonna take a two inch quick release parachute buckle, thread it through the non adjustable side. Work it down to about one inch. Where'd all my stuff go? And super glue and accelerator. So first, that's a joint with the overlap. Then we're gonna do a kind of sloppy joint on top. Now we just made a belt. Next part, it's gonna be the leg danglers. So one inch nylon. Wrap it around the two inch. You don't need to leave too much overlapping. You do want these to be able to slide back and forth. So we know we're gonna need that. I know I'm about here to here. Leave myself a little extra. I'll cut off excess later. Cut two of these, flash one end. Put it around the belt, super glue. We are going on the inside and outside. There's one end. Coming around the other end. Then thread your buckles through. Don't forget to flash your ends. All right, so the way a leg suspension belt works. Move this around. I know that's gonna be too tight for me to start. We have to move one around your waist underneath your abdomen armor. Right. Two tabs are here in the front. Buckle it in. Buckle it in. That's it. This will keep your stuff up. If you want to put a pair of suspenders on this, go underneath, go ahead. All right, that's the basics of your thighs right here. Got one more part to cover. So, really, this last final part I'm going to cover here 
It's gonna be your shoulder bell attachment and your bicep attachment. This is really one of the most simple attachments. You do not have to overdo this. We are not talking about level three certifications with fish hooks and whatnot with it. We're gonna be using some two inch nylon to loop around, close in here, and Velcro up the seams here, up the seams here, so you can have an adjustment point. It's really as simple as that. So to make our shoulder loops, start out with some two inch nylon, Let's measure out what we need. We only need a quarter inch of coverage here. I know it's going to be sitting about right in there. Keeping my eye on that. I'll bring it down to about right there. I need two loops about this big. If you want to keep this adjustable, you can glue one side and do Velcro on the inside so you can move it up and down. I haven't had any real issues keeping a permanent loop. So I like to keep a permanent loop. Before these get glued down, pre-sand, remove any gloss. Dust it off real well. You can measure up. And before we do a final, let's ensure that we've got a good size on this loop. I know it's gonna sit about right here. My straps are about there. So yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with that size. We're gonna do that again on the other one. It's the same thing on both sides. We really don't have to do left and right. I'm just going to show you how I apply the Velcro. Again, before you put down this industrial Velcro, this industrial Velcro is very sticky, but it's not going to stick to dust. Nothing is going to stick to dust. So we're going to have Velcro on the bar edge and the bar edge. And I like to use the hard Velcro to put down on the inside of the armor. We're going to measure out a couple of these. This other one is going to be about the top three quarter section. And when you're cutting Velcro, use a razor knife. The glue on here is going to clog up scissors. I know I'm doing two of these, so go ahead and cut yourself a second piece that's already measured out. So one for each. And measure something out for this. I do like some adjustability with my bicep, so I'll go about mm, close to 7 8 to the link. Now, something else about this Velcro just because you put it on doesn't mean you need to immediately start ripping and tearing Velcro wall. You need to give this adhesive some time to set. It also doesn't hurt if you glue down this adhesive. Uh, I'm very well known to be super glue and accelerating the back end of this, like onto nylon and everything else. It does stick really well. That's on the back end. There's on this end. Now, how do we put them together with a the Velcro? Well, this is the most simple strap you can possibly make. <clears throat> I'm going to estimate my size here and see I really only need something about this long, so about six inches. So I'm going to estimate here um, maybe a little bit over 12 inches of Velcro on the fuzzy side. Cut that. Pull the whole thing off. Fold the ends over each other, just like that. Uh, if you want to, you can keep a full two inch strap. I found cutting this in half works just fine for both arms. So after it's cut, or after it's glued together, just make two straps.
now it's held in place. That's it, that's really all there is to these biceps. This is gonna keep this from falling down. This loop goes through your abdomen suspenders. Or if you're using a set of suspenders for your belt, then that can go through that instead. If you're having problems with the potentially slipping down, that's when you can come in and crisscross your abdomen suspenders. So that's about it. Repeat it on the other side and you're good to go. Uh, after this, we're going to have a suit up video and pictures showing how we put everything on. Um, we kind of explained how everything went with the general assembly with like the chest in the back. All the way to the middle, the and the the back there can be a full attachment. Or you can do like a Velcro attachment like you just saw. There's a lot of little options that you can do that's going to end up being your, you know, your, your final personal preference type thing. And uh, thank you all for joining us, and I hope that you all really learned some, something on building Stormtrooper armor. All right, folks, that was our assembly tutorial, and that should be all the information you really need to get your Stormtrooper together. We hope that you enjoy trooping. I love wearing this right now to show you all, and now let's get you all out there and get you all trooping.